Coach of the year has been wide open all season long. You can make a strong case for seven different guys. I identified 15 candidates going into week 16. That's whittled down based upon some of the outcomes of the week 16 games. But now here's Kevin Stefanski. As you mentioned, four different quarterbacks starting multiple games. First team to do that and make the playoffs. He's now the favorite, courtesy of DraftKings Sportsbook, at minus 275. He's jumped Dan Campbell, who was wire-to-wire favorite. Stefanski now the overwhelming favorite to win it. Now that they're in the playoffs, and it can only get better down the stretch, they can still win the division. They can still be the one seed, as we've said. But even making the playoffs, just making the playoffs. And, Peter, my approach to Coach of the Year is very simple. How far a team exceeds the generally accepted preseason expectations. And I don't know what we expected for the Browns. They were the biggest wild card in the NFL entering the season. And then you start sprinkling in adversity after adversity after adversity. Nick Chubb, Deshaun Watson, rotating quarterbacks. Watson's back, then he's gone, then comes Flacco. And all the things they've done, and you have to throw in. Credit to Kevin Stefanski for making Jim Schwartz his defensive coordinator. There were a lot of hot names last year at defensive coordinator. Jim Schwartz wasn't one of them. It was Vic Fangio. It was Brian Flores. It was E.J. Evero. There was no buzz about Jim Schwartz becoming a defensive coordinator and crafting a dominant defense. It's worked out perfectly for the Browns, and here they are, 11-5. and Stefanski won it in 2020, and he very well might win it again. Based upon the current odds, he's the favorite to do so. It almost seems like Dan Campbell that this is a this would be an award for like coach of the year and a half because in the last year and a half as of this morning the Browns are 19 and or the I'm sorry the Lions are 19 and 6 and obviously they're 11 and 4 but the Browns have won 11 games with four different quarterbacks so and again I think Dan Campbell is a fantastic candidate. And if he wins, hats off to him. Uh, Right now, number one on my list would be Stefanski. And it isn't record only. It is what he has done with four different quarterbacks and keeping his, his team in there through all. I mean, they have had a slew of injuries. Everybody does. They've probably had as many significant injuries as any team in the league. And here's this team that still has enough, and you mentioned it earlier. Uh, he has the the wherewithal and the, I don't even want to say, it's not bravery, it's just he hired a former head coach who clearly still has the, the skills in what he does in Jim Schwartz to be considered, whether it'll ever happen again, I don't know, to be considered as a head coach again. And he doesn't care. Stefanski doesn't care. He just wants to bring in the best people. And so to me, he'd be number one. Campbell and D'Amico Ryans both deserve an awful lot of credit, in my opinion. I mean, D'Amico Ryans, if you don't get the quarterback hurt, you know, who knows where, you know, Houston could have been right now, but probably there's a good chance they'd be on the way to the playoffs. But And look, they could still sneak in, but those three guys would be atop my ballot. Yeah, it's going to be tough to make the argument against D'Amico Ryans. They were the one team in the AFC going into the season that many said have no chance at making the playoffs. They win that division. That really does throw a wrench into this presumption it's going to be Stefanski. But, but when you look at the closing kick. When you look at the Flacco angle, the fact that the Browns were willing to go where no one else would go and get the most out of him, that adds a little something to this for Stefanski and might push him over the top when it's time to cast the ballot after week 18. And again, that all hinges on the Texans winning or the Colts winning the division. If the Jaguars win the AFC South, then I think it's a no-brainer that it's Stefanski. The defense could produce Defensive Player of the Year in Miles Garrett. And frankly, if they would end up with a number one seed, you have to at least think about Miles Garrett as MVP. There's been two prior defensive MVPs, Alan Page in 71, Lawrence Taylor in 86. But if the Browns get the one seed, he's the best player on the team. 
He's the guy that you would at least put into, at least I would, put into the conversation, into the mix, put him on the ballot. It goes five deep now at MVP. He gets one of those five spots for me if the Browns would end up winning the division or getting the one seed in the AFC. He may anyway. I don't know. To me, I think I saw a headline on The Athletic this morning that, you know, something to the effect of why Lamar Jackson should be MVP. I mean, you can't decide who the MVP is after 15 games. You got to play the schedule out. That's why I said the same thing as everybody who's got to vote on Monday night. Well, <clears throat> Lamar Jackson probably has just vaulted his way into favorite status. But there's a lot of there's a lot that is different between favorite status and casting your vote. And a lot can happen between now and um 10 days from now, 11 days from now, when you really sit down and start to think, who's the MVP for 17 games, not for 15. So to me, I, I, I think it's, it's, it's fine to say somebody's the leader in the clubhouse, but the golf tournament's not over. And the field is still, some of the field is still out on the, on the 16th hole right now. So let's just let it play out. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.